So okay, then now the record is on. It's just another example to um, say demonstrate something about the joint displacement. Okay. Now um, we are going to look at the same beam. So it says here that uh, if the beam in example number five prior to loading, prior that's before. Okay, before loading experiences settlements as follow. So the um, number same name A B C D. Support A settles down 1.25 centimeter and also rotates a little bit. Nine multiplied by 10 to the power of minus four radian. Support B also comes down 0.3 centimeter. And support C down 0.53 centimeter. So now apparently because the joints move, we are going to have moment due to joint displacement. Okay, so let us uh, carry on. Uh, step number zero and one, say same as uh, example number five. So we are going to begin at uh, step number two, which is, uh, what is that? The fixed end moment, okay? Now fixed end moment, F, E, M, because I say prior to loading, before we, before we start loading the beam, excuse me. And, ooh, ah! Um, before uh, we load, so that means uh, no fixed end moment because we don't have any load, okay? Now. Step number two then, slope deflection e uh, equation. Now uh, we have something because now you can say this is the prescribed condition. It's already there, we know how much they are. So now we have theta A. Remember that we always assume that the support A is fixed and therefore the rotation is zero. But this time we just have the rotation. But again, it's a fixed value. And counterclockwise means that this is negative and it is 0 0.0009 radian. Okay. Now you see AB. I can draw AB here. Now you see A goes down one, uh, excuse pink. A goes down 1.25, but B only down 0.3. So when you look at the member, the member now looks like this, right? So what do you see? The member is clockwise or counterclockwise. How the? Huh? Don't be afraid. It is counterclockwise because see, it's like that, right? So when you calculate the sign, it should come out to be negative, right? Or if you don't want to bother about that, you can always use the left one and then minus the right one. Or the right, um, the right one minus the left one, sorry. So psi AB is now equal to 0.3 minus 1.25 divided by the length of the member. And because this is in centimeters, so I have to change the length of the beam to centimeters as well, right? So that becomes 300. So psi AB is now minus 0.0032 radian. And when I look at the member BC now, 
B still comes down the same value there, but C is down 0.53. So it's slightly more than 0.3. So you should see that member B, C is doing this, right? So you see psi for BC is now clockwise, is that right? And psi BC, this time is going to be equal to 0 0.53 minus 0 0.3 divided by the length, which is now 500 centimeter. So that is point. Zero 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 four six rate. These become prescribed conditions of your structure. Okay, and we still can proceed to write our slow deflection equation. So now M A B is going to be two E two K. Two theta a, and theta a is not zero now, it's minus 0 0.0009 radian plus theta b minus three psi. Psi is negative, so it's minus against minus, you see? See, because this the sign outside here, this one is negative because your moment against the, uh, the joint displacement should be in the opposite as the, uh, the rotation or the movement of the joint of the member, right? So you see in the end, uh, no, not in the end, you see this member AB, it rotates clockwise, or oh, counterclockwise, I'm sorry. It rotates counterclockwise, It rotates counterclockwise. So you better have clockwise moment to try to resist that. Right? So in the end, negative, negative, you, you're going to have the positive value out of this. Okay? So that's that. No fixed end moment. So MAB is now 4EK theta B with all the hula baloo of the calculation. This is plus. 0 0.0312 EK. Uh, right. Next is MBA. So it's now 2 E 2 K. This time is 2 set of B plus theta A, which is uh, minus 0 0.0009, and then minus three sine. So these two terms, they are the same because when your member rotates like this, the moment that will resist, um, let me uh, draw it separately. If your member does this, the moment that will help resist this joint displacement, which cause your member to rotate, they should go in the same direction, right? So that's why they're the same. And so here it is, um, eight E K say to be plus point zero three four eight E K. Next up is M. BC two E three K and now we have um, say two theta B plus theta C minus three psi, but this psi is now this guy. See that? So it's point zero 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 four six, and that's it. And this turns out to be 12 E K say to be plus six E K say to C minus 
point zero zero point zero zero eight to eight e k and the last one m c b it's two e three k two theta c plus theta b minus the same number zero 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 four six and here it is. I should begin with the six e k theta b again plus twelve e k theta c minus point uh, zero zero eight to eight e k. Now the moment MCD is there only when we have the cantilever load, right? We have a cantilever moment. So when we when we say that uh, prior to loading, there's no load on on the end of the cantilever portion, so we don't have MCD here at all. So the next step is to write our equilibrium equations. Okay, so we now can have MBA plus MBC equal to zero. So basically it's these two, right? BA and BC. So now we have 20. E K theta B plus six E K um, theta C. And that one, when you put them together, it becomes plus point uh, two zero two six five E K equal to zero. Oh, that's too long. Let me move that to the left a little bit. Okay, so that becomes our equation number one. Maybe I should move everything in all together. Okay, and then move this Yeah. Tidy, nice and tidy. Now uh, it's a uh, sigma m c equal to zero. So basically, you only have m c b. So that means that term itself m c b must be equal to zero, right? Basically, that term six e k say uh, to b plus twelve e k say to c minus Point zero zero eight to eight e k equal to zero. And that's your equation number two. Okay, and notice that again we have the same coefficients here. That's a good sign. So now we can proceed and play some calculation music. So now we have e k theta b equal to for oh, the, the entire ek term is gone sorry Oops. Mm. theta b is now minus 0 0.0018 and theta c is um, 0.0016. So yeah, that's the answer. And just to, to make a point here, to demonstrate uh, the effect of the settlement, the only way that we can have this uh, value is to have the value of the EK, okay? So let me give you the property of a steel structure. In st to help us see the picture here, but where is the number? 
All right. So let's say, given um, yeah, say number five in moments, right? Say given, is it given in the beginning? Yeah, right there, it is given. So given that, given E and I, now your M A B is going to be equal to four. Um, let me put E K out, okay? And this is gonna be a little bit tricky because K is I over L, okay? So here is gonna be E. And that stiffness, I is uh, four multiplied by 10 to the power four. And the length here has to be I over L. That's uh, six. But it's in meters, so we have to change the unit by multiplying with this. Okay, and then this uh, is uh, four, right? From MAB. Now I, I pull EK out of this. So inside it's uh, four set of B plus that. Okay. Minus 0 0.0018 plus point, uh, zero three one two. How come it's so long again? Seems like I have a problem managing this space today. Okay. So that is quite large, you know, 32. Thousand kilogram meter. Think about it. It's just only a tiny bit of settlement. MBA. Um, here again, it's E. I. Then six and then a hundred square. And eight. And this is minus point zero zero eighteen plus the number in that is point uh, zero three four eight. That is about twenty seven and two hundred kilogram meter MBC. So, because this is very long and tedious, so let me skip it. Okay, should it be kilogram centimeter? No, kilogram meter because I divide by a t a hundred square. Uh. See, um, this one is in the kilogram per square centimeter, right? That is uh, in centimeter as well. So I change everything into meter and I divide it by that. So it, in the end, it comes out a kilogram meter. Right, correct. Okay. Got that? Yes. Okay, thanks. Right. Um, so MBC is now, I got a problem with the round off a little bit. So this turns out to be 27 and then 100 kilogram meter. And then MCB. <laughs> wow. My son, feel really funny. Okay, at MCB, you know, when in the end, I, uh, when I place this back, it better be zero and it is because uh, CB, it is a simple N when you don't have 
any load here, this part becomes you know, non-existent. It doesn't have anything to do with the moment of the structure. So we might as well say, say goodbye to it, okay? So M, that means MCB is zero, all right? One moment. So now, uh, all right, MCB is zero. So now we back to the same stuff. You can calculate the reactions if you want. Okay, sorry guys. Um, so again, it's, it's back to the same uh, free body diagram, some kind. Now you have 32. And you have this. See, they all go in the same direction. 272, and then that. Is this, say 272, okay? And now you can calculate your reaction now based on the uh, moment alone. You see the better picture now, I suppose, since it uses orange. So this one is uh, counterclockwise, so you need a couple of clockwise force to uh, maintain this, okay? So that better be equal to 27200, the moment, divided by the length, which is five, right? And this, um, they all go together, so they uh, have be have be add up, okay? And here is thirty-two thousand plus thirty-two thousand this divided by three. So you see, point is this: with a tiny amount of settlement, um, your structure will have a lot of moment to try to resist it, especially when your structure has large moment of inertia, because think about it. If, if your structure has large moment of inertia, it means that it is very strong by itself. So to, for something to cause your structure to have that sediment, it must be huge. And in turn, your structure will try to resist it with a large amount of moment inside or internally. So that means a settlement problem is really, really horrible when you have to deal with the foundation and something is wrong with the foundation. Not only that the moment can be very, very large, you should notice that the direction of the moment in this example is in the opposite direction uh, as the moment of the load uh, in the previous example as well. Right here, you see, that one is like that. It's a both negative moment, but then when your structure twists and turn, the direction of the internal moment becomes opposite, right? So that means, let's say, when you design the structure, you expect to design moment in one direction and then settlement occurs. So the moment changes direction and increase in magnitude. So what do you think is gonna to happen to the structure? It's gonna collapse, right? So settlement and foundation, they are very, very, very important problems and they are very crucial. So some of you guys will fall in love with the, say, geotechnic uh, engineering in this semester and in the next. And so, yep, you're gonna enjoy doing this. You're gonna enjoy laying the foundation for the infrastructure to go up, okay? And if you want to be structural engineers, you also need to know part of this as well, because uh, you cannot say, hey, I'm not a soil engineer. I'm not a geotechnical en engineer. I don't know anything about foundation. You must know something about it as well. Okay. Now, next thing I'd like to point out is that, you see, this is the condition where you always know 
ahead of time this. Right? This is what we can call, let's say if, if I don't have a CD like this, if I don't have it, can I erase this? Can I, do we have, hold on. I can do this, let's try. Uh, I don't work. <laughs> okay. Let's say if I don't have CD, I already know that my moment at C has to be zero, right? You guys agree? This is called end support. Okay, I, I can draw a new picture to save all of us the trouble. Let's say this is our condition. You know the moment here is zero, right? Do you or don't you? Yes, it should be zero. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, it, it has to be zero because this is an, uh, a roller. This is support at the end. Okay, so we can call this support the end support because it's, it's at the end of your structure. But this end support is also a simply supported structure, right? Or you can say this is a simple support. So the fact that this, this is simple support and it is also an end support, you can call this simple end support. Okay, take a look at the, the one on the left. This is end support, right? It's at the end as well, but it's not a simple support. So this is not simple end support. The fact that your support is the end support and it is a simple support. Therefore, we can call it simple end support, which its moment has to be zero. So when you know this, why bother write this equation? We know this is gonna be zero, right? Why write it? It's kind of a waste of time, isn't it? So we have further modification, okay? Because we know that this is going to be zero. So that means if we face the simple end support, we can reduce our even further. I'm trying to find where it is in my note. One moment. Okay, let me die. Oh, can't find it. Yeah. I just want to look for my note. It's, it's easier, but can't find it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I have it in here, so yes, we have to look from here. Mm, here. If you have a case where you can say this is the simple end support, okay? Now you know your Mij, which is again can be written by the slope deflection equation like that. Okay, so it's two Ei over L, two theta I plus theta J minus three Psi, and then Ji is like that. But now you know that Mij is zero. So you can do some mod uh, further modification. This equal to zero. You can eliminate Mij out of your consideration and doing so you can also take theta i out of your unknown. 
by you know, uh, taking care of these two equations and mij equal to zero. So when you multiply this by two and then minus this, which is equal to zero, you can eliminate zeta i. And therefore, you can now have another help from this modified equation. With this equation, it means that you no longer have to write mij is out of calculation. And even though we know that zeta i is not zero, but zeta i j or zeta i is also out of consideration. This is where some students who messed this up. Zeta i is not zero. It is not zero, but because this is the simple end support, we can do some further modification and eliminate zeta i out of the calculation. It is not zero, but we can eliminate it by taking advantage of the simple end support here. Okay. And so instead of solving, you know, a lot of unknowns, you can eliminate one more. So for example, if you, um, it's right here. Let's go back to the first example. When you look at this one, you see with symmetry, you know that uh, theta B here is equal to minus theta D and theta A is equal to minus theta E. So now you are down to three unknowns, correct? Theta A, theta B and theta C. But in this case, you now know that M A and M E will be equal to zero, right? M A and M E in this case, will be zero. So with simple end support, now how many unknowns do you have now? See, it says here, when considering simple end support conditions. How many unknowns do you actually have to solve? Three. Three? It is already three here. Oh, we have an answer from the chat. Two. Something they made that's a senior. Yeah, they, they know well now. It is down to two now because you know MA and ME are zero and you can take advantage of uh, that by using this modification to calculate MJI. You don't need to calculate MIJ because you know it's zero. So you use this equation to calculate MJI and you can see that this equation does not contain theta i because it's been eliminated by using uh, this process. So it's down from three now to two. So you see, in the beginning, from force method, where you need to write three painful equilibrium equ uh, compatibility equations using the displacement method, 
Now you begin with five unknown. But you are good engineer. You know that, hey, actually I know the symmetry, so I can eliminate my unknowns from five to three now. But, oh, that's a symbol and support. I can eliminate my unknown even further. Now I only have two unknowns. But even better, you know, you see from your first experience here that you have symmetry, perhaps you're going to have, a, say, it's equal to zero. So if the loading condition is just exactly the same like this, you can probably think that say that C is going to be zero as well. But that is not certain. It should be certain, right? Because it's symmetric. Say that C has to be zero. Do you believe it? Yes. So if you are very, very good, you have one unknown. Uh, how do you like that? Anyway, that should be enough for today. So do you have any questions? Questions, please. No questions? I'm going to stop the record then.